Grace, what is grace? Grace is not a subject matter. Grace is not a curriculum. Grace is not what we use when we miss the mark or when we sin. Grace is the person of Jesus Christ. The gospel is the good news about the grace of God in the person of Jesus Christ being extended to us that we may live with God every single day of our lives. When we go to the supermarket, when we go to the gym, when we run, when we spend time with our children, grace is Christ. And the good news is that we have access to him every single day of our lives. Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the gospel today. Uh, I'm so grateful that you joined us here, and I believe that this time is going to be of value. I believe that it's going to be a, an amazing time in the word of grace, and you'll be able to see some things clearly uh, in your life. Um, and, and I believe that by the spirit of God that you're going to be transformed uh, in this time together as you continue to join us and log in with us. On the gospel today, I believe that it's, we're, we're believing God that it's going to be in a million plus households, man, weekly, amen, weekly, a million plus households receiving the gospel, living life according to the spirit of God in the way he intended us to live. Amen. So let's go ahead and open up with prayer and get into tonight's lesson. Father, we thank you for this time together. I thank you, Lord, that our eyes are open by your grace. Our, our ears are anointed to hear from you. Lord, we thank you by your spirit, we are transformed. We are, by your spirit, we are made whole and we give you praise for it. Lord, I thank you that we shall have no interruptions, no hindrances to the word tonight and that we shall see clearly your plan, your purpose for our lives individually and collectively as a body. And we give you praise for it now. In Jesus name, we pray. And all those agreed said, amen. 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 Good evening once again, everybody. We, we've been... Obviously, we're talking about the gospel. This 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 show is called the Gospel Today, and we we focused on the grace of God. We focus on the true gospel, Amen. The good news, the over the top good news of grace, and who is Jesus Christ and what He's come to do. And tonight we want to talk about life after grace. What is life after grace? Life after grace is. What, how do we live life now that after grace, the grace of God has come? You see, after the grace of God has come, he fulfilled the law. So if we're, we're living life after grace and we're in Christ, then there is no more law of Moses to keep. That law has been fulfilled for everyone that's in Christ Jesus. I'm sure I've driven that home with you, but the law has been fulfilled now that we're in Christ Jesus. So now it's about how do we live practically? How do we live practically according to the grace of God? You know, when you when you when you live life before the grace of God, before your understanding of the grace of God, you know, you hear things such as, you know, don't leave your, your church home too early. Things bad things happen when you leave. You consider a backslide if you leave church. So it's all these all these ideas and philosophies that people tied into, which really had its foundations in the law, because it was uh, God dealt with people differently. Uh, in the law than he does with the grace of God. Now that we're in the grace, we need to know how to live life now that we have grace. Life with life in grace is all about life with God. And really, the, the art of the Christian is how do we yield? In other words, we know we have the life of God in us now. We, we've driven that home. You have the, the life of God. Grace came to give you eternal life. Eternal life is life with God. So you know you have life with God now. That's, that's settled. That's finished. That's yours. So now it's about how do I yield to God's life so that my life will be a direct reflection of God's life in me. Do you understand? It's now I'm yielding to what I already have so that it'll be all of him and none of me. Praise God. So you're now just, you're now a vessel. You are now a, a vessel. Now that you're in Christ, you are a vessel by which God uses your body like he used Jesus' body to do and accomplish his will here on the earth. Amen? And so our art is how do we yield to that life? To How do we yield to that life of grace? Now, now after grace has come, it's not about let me keep this law so God can bless me. Let me keep this law 
so that I won't be cursed. Let me give so that I won't be cursed by God. Life is now about God is with me. He tells me what to give. I Listen, I can't be stuck at 10% and, and you know, leaving voicemails, asking questions about, you know, do I give 10? What if I get, uh, what if, do I give 10%? Do I, you know, my tithing? Do I, do I, you know, if I get an increase, a uh, <laughs> check in the mail, you know, what do I supposed to give for that? Do I give a 10? No, man, listen, it's about life in the spirit of God and whatever he, he, he is now instructing you to do and to give, you are obedient to him. Not out of fear of trouble, not out of fear of, of punishment, but out of the love of God, out of the fact that what he's done so much for you, the fact that you have a relationship with him. Now it's about yielding to him. Amen? You want to perfect the art of yielding to the life of God. You see, when we got born again, we, we know that we received the spirit of God. The word tells us that we didn't receive the spirit of the world, but we received what? The spirit of God. And it is the very life of God. The spirit, it, the spirit of God is the very life of God. It's not one of those spooky spirits you hear folks talking about. Uh, no, it's the, when I say the spirit of God, we receive the very life of God. We receive the very nature of God, the character of God, who is righteousness. Amen. So we receive that and it came by grace. It came by grace, who is Jesus. When we receive Jesus Christ, we receive uh, the life of God. But here's how we received it, by faith. Amen. So life now after, after grace is a life of faith. It's a life of faith taking what grace has made available. Grace makes the life of God available to us now. He makes access to God available. But faith says, Lord, I thank you that you're with me. Faith says, Lord, I thank you that you're present with me every day. You're, you, you communicate with me. You teach me. You lead me out of harm's way. You see, we don't have to live life uh, falling down in order to learn. We have the presence of God, the spirit of God, who, who is very present with us to be our helper. Uh, in John 14, 26, Jesus says, uh, at the helper who is the spirit of God, he will come. He will, he will pray that the, we will have another helper and that helper is the spirit of God. So now at, a life after grace is about allowing the helper, the great helper, the great teacher to come forward and shine forward in our lives. Amen. Let's look at that in, in John chapter 14, verse 26. So the life after grace is about living in the spirit. And this is a life of faith. You know, this is not a life life of, well, can you give me 10, 10 laws that I can live by live by faith? No, this is this is living by faith and walking with God by faith. Amen. We walk by faith and not by sight. We walk with God. That means when I wake up daily, I thank God that he's present. I thank God that he is with me. I thank God that I can hear from him. What am I doing? I'm, I'm cultivating the faith. I'm cultivating the faith, even though I, have, I haven't seen him, even though I may not have heard from him that morning, I'm already cultivating the faith that I have ears to hear and hearts to receive from him. Amen. And so when I know, I know now that life after grace is all about, praise God, yielding to the life of God that is present on the inside of us. Amen. Verse uh, John chapter 14, verse 26 says these, uh, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. Somebody say the Holy Spirit teaches me all things. He teaches all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Jesus said the Holy Spirit, here is his job. Here is what he will be sent to do. And trust me. Whenever, the God, whenever God sends his gifts, they fulfill everything that he's sent for it to do. Praise God. So he has been sent, the Holy Spirit has been sent to teach us all things and to be what our helper. What is he helping us in? He's helping us in our life with God. Amen. He is showing us how this life with God, life and faith is all about and how it operates. Amen. And how to take hold of of what has been made available to us as children of God. You have to know that you have fully been, you've been fully supplied with everything that you need that pertains to life and godliness. It is a done deal. It is 
finished. And the Holy Spirit will teach us all about what's finished. The Holy Spirit shows us what's finished. Healing is finished. Why is, it, why is healing finished? Because the healer is in you. <laughs> I mean, you, you're, how does that look? You're asking God, God, come and heal. When he is saying, I am in you, do you not believe? Do you not believe that I'm already in you? Then that means that you already have enough healing present in your physical body to heal you of every disease, every sickness, every pain, every discomfort, uh, everything, and then some. That, that then some is poured out. When you lay hands or you declare healing over somebody, that's, you're just releasing the healing from your physical body. Why do you think that the woman with the issue of blood said, if I touch, just touch the hem of Jesus' garment, I will be made whole? Why? Because he was carrying healing in his body. Praise God. So all she had to do was touch and make contact with the healer, and she, will be, she was made whole. You see, this is, this is the life of faith I'm talking about, man. You already have the healing healer in you. He's already put healing in you case just in case you need it. Because we know that because of sin still present in the earth and in people, uh, the sin nature, that the body still decays. According to the word, the body still decays. But praise God, we we don't die. We simply transfer over into our our, our new body, our new man. Praise God. So but still, it, so God put healing in us for situations like sickness, amen? And it's so that you can fulfill your assignment on the earth. Why does God want you healed? Not so you can just walk around saying you heal. He wants you healed. He wants you whole so that you can finish your race. Praise God. He wants you to finish your race. Do you want to finish your race? Amen? Because he's equipped you with the ability to finish the race and finish it strong. Amen. And so that's what it's about. That's what healing is about. That's why we're healed. When we when we declare healing and, and you're healed in your physical body, you're healed in your mind, you're healed so that you can finish your race. Amen. If you finish your race, I believe God gives every believer, I believe that. I believe God gives every believer a glimpse of where they're going. And when we you get that glimpse, I believe it's by choice. I believe it's hey, all is well with the family. My court, my race is ran. I ran my race. Paul said, finish the race. He finished his race. He fought the good fight of faith and he finished his course. Amen. So once, once that course is finished, glory to God, it's all well and good, man. Just transition on out of here and go spend your time with your heavenly father, man, enjoying the life that you've been hearing about, that you've been experiencing some here on the earth. Amen. And then you get to experience it in its fullness when it's all said and done. Death for the believer is not a bad thing, man. It's a it's a joyous time, really, man. It's 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 painful to see the loss of someone because of their impact there that the, that they had on the earth or you know the relationships. It's always a it's always a, a time to grieve because of that loss of impact on the earth, man. But when we're looking at it through the lenses of faith, it's it's a joyous time, man. They finished their course. Uh, if it's a believer, I believe that I believe every believer. I'm not talking about people who put the title of Christian on, on them. I'm talking about believers, praise God, that have ran the course, ran the race, and they've had a glimpse of what's to come, and they made that choice to leave. I, I believe it's a joyous time in the Lord. Amen. So life in, after grace is all about yielding to the life of God and allowing the helper to lead the way. Man, you have to become a student of the Spirit of God. But it comes by choice. God's not going to make you choose him. Amen? He's not going to make you uh, yield to the helper. You have to make the choice to say, I'm going to yield to your help, Lord. All of you, none of me. I submit to you and I follow your lead. Amen? Uh, so we know that grace came to give us this life. According to John 3, 15 through 16. Let's go over there. I'm not going to assume that everybody's on here is a, a super experienced Christian and a believer. And you know, you've known all this. I want to show you in the word as we continue to move forward in the things of God. So, because I want everybody on the same page, John 3, 15 and 16. It says that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, 
that whoever believes, whoever believes, not, not whoever wears the Christian title, but whoever believes in him, believe in Christ and his work, believe in him, should not perish, but have eternal life. That's life with God, life with God. And, and I'll show you that in John chapter 17, uh, if I'm going too fast, I, I, I apologize. I'm just excited. I'll slow down. But we just left John 3, 15 and 16. We're heading over to John 17, where we're going to look at eternal life, this life that I'm talking about after grace, the life that we received after grace, after grace has come. After grace has come, it's now about life with God. Verse uh, John chapter 17, verse 3, it says, and this is eternal life that you may know him, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent, that we may know him. This is eternal life. Eternal life starts today. If you don't know him, so today today is eternal is the start of your eternal life. Amen? So when you transition out of here, when you transition, you're going somewhere to with someone that you know. <laughs> Amen. He didn't just give you eternal life to ignore him the whole your entire life on the earth. And then once it gets close to time or you feel like it's close to time, all of a sudden now you want to know him. And <laughs> now you want to have peace with him. No, you can know him today. No, have eternal life, which is truly to know who God is. Amen. When you know who he is, we know his will. And when we know his will, man, it begins to consume us man when you know god's will you talk with him you fellowship with him it it really does consume you because you become to know you come to know how much he loves you and you come to know how much he how much he gave for you and it's just love man out of that love you're like lord how, how can i serve you how can i serve you and here's the amazing thing about life after grace is that i can serve god in the marketplace man you can serve God in the marketplace. We, you know, before we truly understood grace, it was like, if you didn't serve God in the church, in the church alone, then you were in the world and you were worldly. And that's not, that's not the truth at all. Now that I'm, I'm living with God, I can serve, I can serve God in the marketplace. I can be a success. He wants me to be a success in everything that we do. Amen. Even in the marketplace, because what happens? The people who rejected Jesus, the people who reject God, they are in the marketplace very often. And you come across, we come across them and you see them, you talk to them. Those are the ones who are going to see God in your life. Amen. And so what happens when they see God on your life? They begin to want, they, be, they get curious as to how are you doing what you do? Or how do you have the peace that you have? How can I walk like you walk? What are you doing? And what do you and what do you say, man? It's it's my relationship, <laughs> amen. Don't go down the list of well, you know, I fast at least three times a week, uh, man, and then I have like about five prayer groups that I'm a part of, you know, and so that right there just get, it gives me all the success I need. No, <laughs> it's the relationship, man. It is the relationship, and out of that relationship, I want to connect with other believers, uh, man. Out of that relationship. I spend time with him out of that relationship. You know, I, I'm a success because of that. So eternal life is all about knowing God and yielding to the life of God. Let's look at uh, John chapter six, verse 40, John chapter six, verse 40. Praise God, man. This is, this is powerful because we now know what, what our life, life is supposed to look like after grace. After grace, it says, and this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So we know that grace has come to give us not just uh, a good life, but the life of God, the life of God. Amen. And so we now, as believers, how do we yield to that life of, of with God after grace? How do we yield to that life of God? See, we are, we are alive only because it's God's life that's giving us life. You understand? So 
we were dead. The Bible says we were dead in our trespasses, dead in sin before we received Christ's life or the life of God. So without the life of God in us, we're dead. So it's not a it's not a gray area. It's not it's not an in between that oh yeah I I believe you know about Jesus Christ and what He came to do and then you know I know I'm not I'm not born again but I'm, I'm kind of on the fence. No, there is no fence. You're either dead or you're alive. You either have you're you're either dead in your sin and trespasses or you have the life of God is giving you life. Amen. So that that brings a whole meaning. A uh, whole defining point on your life. What's guiding you? Death, uh, the old nature, the old you, still, or do you have the life of God orchestrating your life? You understand? There's no in between. There is no, I'm, I'm getting there. No, you're either there or you're not there. I think that's up to you to know who's guiding my life. Why are Why is my pursuit uh, success in the world? Why is my pursuit so that the world will accept me? What's, what's driving me to be accepted in the world? That sure, it's surely not the Spirit of God. It's not the Spirit of God that, that, that even cares about us being accepted by the world because those, who, those of us that are, 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 are understand or are living our lives with God, we know that you're going to be rejected by the world. They're going to criticize you. They're going to talk about you. They're going to ask you why, you know, why you do what you do. Amen. Because the world rejects you. Jesus told us that, listen, the world rejected him. It's going to reject you too. Amen. And so understanding that now we can know how to truly live this life after grace. Amen. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I want, to, I want us to kind of really get into uh, this life with God. So we're going to touch on it. We're going to start it today. We're going to touch on it again so that we can begin to truly perfect this art of yielding. This is something that we God won't force us to do. It's something that it's a desire that gets really begins to birth, burst forth. Uh, from the, on the inside of us, by the Spirit of God, it's this want to yield to Him. It's this want to fellowship with Him. And we have to know how to recognize that. So it's not a work of the flesh where I'm trying to force myself to do something that I have no desire to, but it's recognizing this desire that the Spirit of God has put in me, this desire to fellowship, this desire to yield. Amen. Uh, 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, verse 10. It says, well, I started verse nine. It says, for God did not appoint us to wrath, but to attain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 10, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together. You want to make a note of this. It says that who died for us, the Lord Jesus Christ, from verse nine, going into verse 10, who died for us, that we, that whether we are awake or sleep, wake or sleep, sh we should live together with him. Somebody say, I live with him. I live with God. This is the will of God. This is, this is what salvation is all about. Salvation is not about just about going to heaven. Salvation is all about the package that's tied, wrapped in salvation. This life where I can now live with God. Now that grace has come, I now can live with God. I now can fellowship with God. I now have the, the life of God in me that's bringing me to a, an, a perfect alignment with him and his will and his purpose. And it only happens when I get into an agreement with what the word says. And then it begins to line me up with God's life. Amen. We can live God's life here on the earth. It is, it's in the word so we can live it. So it's true. It's in the word. It's what grace has made available to us. So therefore we can choose to believe what the word says or we can choose to uh, be combative about it, man, and make excuses as to why I'm never going to arrive there or 
Oh man, that's that's people that have that that giant faith. I don't have that yet. No, you just decided not to believe it. You just decided not to believe it. Or maybe you've been under the wrong teaching. Maybe they're teaching you that you don't have that kind of faith. Maybe they're teaching you that in order to get that kind of faith, you have to be a, 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 a one of the top tier givers in the church. Maybe they're teaching you that. I want to teach you the truth. And the truth is God doesn't give us more blessings based on our more giving. Uh, the truth is God doesn't give us more anointing based on the more giving. God doesn't give us more of anything based on what we do. He's decided already that I'm going to give you everything I have in my son, Jesus Christ, and I need you to believe it. And see, your believing is going to cause such a shift in your life that you're going to have the desire to want to give. You're going to have a desire to say, man, this word has to get around the world. What can I do? How can I serve? Can I give? Can I volunteer? Can I, how can I get involved with getting this gospel out? You see, everything should be coming from our lives with God. You're volunteering at your church or, or where uh, the ministry you're involved in. It should come from the life of God, not let me do something so that I can get my situation and my life turned around. No, it's everything that I do comes forward from the life that I have with God. Amen. The stewardship, the servanthood, it comes from God's life. Amen. It's that, it's that desire to never quit, man. It comes from the life of God. It's that, no, this is what I've been assigned to do. And the men, me and Triana have already decided, hey, we're going to do what God said to do from the beginning until he says stop. Amen. We're going to keep doing it. We're going to keep doing it. And we're going to keep doing it until he says stop. He says, preach the word, preach the gospel, S stay with the gospel, keep preaching, keep preaching, keep teaching it, keep getting it out there, do whatever, whatever is necessary to get the gospel out. Amen. And that's what we're doing. We're doing whatever is necessary to get the gospel out. And then work of the flesh. Oh, aren't you trying to do something? Don't you need to uh, ask, he, ask God? He's already told us what to do. <laughs> Amen. He said, whatever, hey, get the gospel out. Keep preaching it teaching it, writing it, whatever needs to happen to get this gospel out. Keep doing it. And it's not, no quitting is in us. Amen. You see, this doesn't come from our own ability. This comes from the life that we live with God. Amen. And you can have this life with God. You can walk with this life in God where quitting is not an option. Amen. Amen. If the church doors are closed, you, the spirit of God leads you to another opportunity to serve. Amen. It leads you to, it's just this, I can't, I'm not quitting. I'm not quitting. I'm not going to allow the enemy to put me on the sideline when the spirit of God is con constantly putting on me to continue to serve. Uh, I'm not going to let the limitations of a building keep me from serving God and doing what he wants me to do concerning the gospel. Amen. I I'll allow the creativity of the Holy Spirit, who is my helper, to bring new ideas uh, or getting involved in my virtual church, in my virtual church, whatever needs to happen. Amen. Because the father's business is my business <laughs> and the business is get the gospel out. The business is may get people to know about this life with God. That's the business. Amen. That's the business that will have everlasting effect on this earth and after praise God. Amen. And so we're going to keep doing it. And we're gonna keep we're gonna keep preaching it. We're gonna keep teaching. We're gonna keep sharing, and we're gonna keep declaring uh, the good news of grace, the good news of this life we have with God. Let me go to one more. Praise God. Ephesians chapter two. Ephesians chapter two, verse four and verse five. It says, "But God, who is rich in mercy." because of his great love with which he loved us. Verse five, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive, praise God. It says we were dead, man. We were dead in our trespasses. You thought you were alive, but you were actually dead. You were spiritually dead. You were completely separated from God. You felt like you, the more you did good, you felt like you were closer to God, but the word said you were dead. We were dead in trespasses made us alive. I'm alive because I have the life of God that gives me life, man. 
I'm alive because I have the life of God in me. Made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Praise God. Glory to God. Man, let's just give God praise. Father, we just thank you tonight. I thank you, Lord, that we've been saved by grace. And our life is not our life, but it's your life. And our lives, our, we live life with you. We live life uh, yielding to your life, man. And we give you thanks for it. Lord, we praise you. We give you honor. We give you glory. I thank you, Lord, that it is well with everyone that's under the sound of my voice. Father, I thank you that they'll never be the same again because of the gospel. And we give you praise for it. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Listen, if you're here tonight and you have not made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, let's make that decision. Listen, you don't have forever to make a decision. And I don't know what the, I, I know that the enemy may be trying to sell you that you're not good enough to, to be saved and you have to make sure you do the right things in order to, for God to accept you. Listen, he accepts you the way you are and then he does the changing in you. He accepts you the way you are. That is true. Don't let anyone tell you differently. Every tendency you may have, uh, every uh, uh, ungodly desire that you have, God accepts you with all of that and says, I'll be the one to change and transform them. And you can come as you are. And here's what I want you to do. It's really simple. I want you to just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I admit to you that I am a sinner, but today I believe the gospel and I turn to your son, Jesus Christ, for my salvation I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and you were raised on the third day. This day, I invite you into my life to be my Lord and Savior. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, if you said that prayer, you are born again. Somebody say, I didn't feel, I didn't feel anything. You don't have, it's not about feeling. It's about recognizing, repenting turning, believing in Jesus Christ. Amen. You recognize you were a sinner. You're a sinner, not because of your behavior. You were born with the sin nature from Adam. Now that you receive Jesus Christ and his perfect sacrifice, you now have the life of God on the inside of you. And now you're learning about yielding to that life. Amen. And we are so grateful that you made that decision. And here's what we want to do. I want you to text, I am saved to 980-224-0998. Text, I am saved to 980-224-0998. We are so grateful that you made a decision today. Praise God, man. We rejoice with you. Listen, everyone, thank you guys for joining us here tonight for the gospel today. Uh, be sure to tune in on Friday for another amazing session of the gospel today uh, at 6.30 p.m. God bless you. Have an amazing evening. We'll see you soon.